What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, and... Simone. Dylan Mills is somebody that I get behind. I'm not even going to cap on DeAndre Hopkins. He has the best hands in the league. Play it through it. Played hurt. Play, play through mean? it. Hobble exactly. it on back to the field. Right. I'm saying, when you, when you one of the best teams out there, you know, the other team's division, I ain't got no choice but to try and get like you. You dig? So, I'm... so let's get right into the video. Let's go. Make sure you guys like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with us. Check out the links down below. Buy us a coffee, help fuel this channel. Shout out to Fisher Smoke with the Spizzards, a merch collection, and turn your notification bells on so you don't miss a single video or a single live stream. Yeah, right, too. So, Dylan, we got a lot to talk about. It's been a minute since we talked. Um, I think last time we talked, we were just getting done with the first round. Yeah. Now the second round is over. What are your immediate reactions? Media reaction is Jason Tatum is a bad man, along with Luka Doncic. I just saw the stats come out, and um, Luka had more points than Devin Booker. Get it together. More assists than CP3, Ooh. more rebounds than DeAndre Ayton, Ooh. and more steals than Mikael Bridges in the whole entire series. Wow. You're saying, like, combine? Like, he scored. He had more points than CB3. Combined. More, I mean, over more the points. Games. Yeah, over okay. all the games. So that's crazy. Um, Luca and Luca and Jason Tatum are the two players that have stood out. Yes. Um, in this playoffs, I would say overall. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. um, Luca has been the best player in throughout his journey to the conference finals, and Jason Tatum has been the best player throughout his journey to the conference finals, series after series after series. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to making predictions, which we're going to have to make, mm -hmm. let's start with the Eastern Conference because I feel like that's the easiest one to predict. I feel like both of us are going with the Celtics. Yeah, I'm going with the Celtics. I just don't think Miami has a good enough offense. Their offensive firepower isn't good enough to keep up with the Celtics because while their defense is ferocious, they do have a really elite defense. They don't have enough to stop Tatum. Like, this isn't, you know, no shade to, of course, my Atlanta Hawks, but this isn't just the Atlanta and Hawks where you just... And this ain't the 76ers. Right, where you just got to stop Joel or just got to stop Trey Young. No, mm -hmm. you can try to neutralize Jaden, Jason Tatum, but Jason Tatum's still going to get his because while Trey Younger was a, you know, smaller dude, you could, you know, trap him and use bigger bodies on him. Jason Tatum is long and big, and he can shoot over anybody, too. Like, he's not... He doesn't have that KD type length, but he has the length where he can still shoot over anybody and get his shot off. And he's strong enough to get to the paint and body somebody down. With Joel, you know, they just kind of trapped him and did well, everything. Well, one with Joel, they uh, had two games with Joel not playing. That's very true. They had they didn't have to worry about Joel for two games. And so. then the two, the other games, mind you, we won two games in that series. The other games, right. that's a beat down, wore down Joel with a right. broken face, a exactly. concussion, and a broken thumb. Exactly. So they didn't even play. Even at full strength, I would have taken the Miami Heat just because they're a more complete team. But right. they didn't even play a full strength, whatever the Sixers team would have been. And then also, too, James Harden completely rolling over in the yeah. second um, half, just not even freaking trying. Belly so, up. <laughs> you said belly up like it, a cockroach. It was belly up like a dog <laughs> or a cockroach, whichever way you want to put it. But like you were saying about our series, mm -hmm. um, they had to just keep Trey Young from scoring 50. Exactly. They wasn't worried about nobody else. They had to just keep Joel and B from scoring a triple-double. Uh -huh. The Celtics team like you mentioned, is completely different because not only do you have Jason Tatum going crazy, but you have Grant Williams. You have Jalen Brown, who's liable to take over if Jason Tatum has an off game Marcus or whatever it's game from. Marcus Smart, a dog. Um, freaking Al Horford, a dog. He's Peyton, been a dog this whole series. Gotta talk about Peyton Pritchard. He's came up big mm -hmm. in some of these games too, hitting threes, you know, making some shots off the dribble as well. So they got a complete team. And then plus, Robert Williams is supposed to come back now. Mm -hmm. He missed, uh, what, three? I think he played last game. Yeah, he played last bit. game a little bit. Yeah, you're right. Well, they made um, him available. I don't know if he ever checked in. Yeah, I'm not sure if he ever checked in either. But either way, Robert Williams, I'm sure, will have a significant, you know, um, he'll he'll play a significant amount in this series, which he didn't do in the last series. So the, this Boston Celtics team is just different. So while, okay, maybe you can take away or neutralize Jason Tatum a little bit, you got all those other guys to worry about. And the Miami Heat haven't faced an offensive firepower like the Boston Celtics yet. And I just don't think the Miami Heat have that offense to back it up. You know, Jimmy Butler can get his, maybe Bam, 
But, you know, even though the, those guys, you know, Bam Adebayo, uh, Tyler Hero, P.J. Tucker even, when it comes to offensively, they were very inconsistent. Duncan Robinson as well. Is Duncan Robinson going to have, you know, an effect in this series? Because in our series, he really wasn't a factor besides game one. I don't even one. think he checked into our series. Yeah, so because he's he's more of a liability now in the playoffs. Like in the regular season, you can have him out there shooting threes and, you know, he can get away with, you know, some of the stuff on defense wins in the regular season. But in the playoffs where everything is amplified, you can't really have Duncan Robinson out there because he can't guard anybody. Mm-hmm. And if he's not hitting threes, he's useless. So, yeah, we both have the Celtics. And, again, the Celtics have had the toughest path. The Celtics and Bucks had the toughest path out of anybody, right. I feel like, in the playoffs overall. And the For fact sure. that they had to play each other, the Bucks obviously playing without Chris Middleton, but that's yeah. nothing to take away from the Celtics. Right. I had whoever coming out of the Celtics, Bucks, obviously winning the East and probably right. winning it all. And like you said, you don't think that the Heat have the offensive – um, firepower, right. definitely not. Especially, we keep talking about the Celtics on offense, all the guys who can knock down shots, boom, 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 whatever. But mm-hmm. we got to remember that defense has been proven yes. in the playoffs. They had to go through KD. They had to go through Kyrie Irving. They had mm-hmm. to go through Giannis and Tim Kupta. You telling me that they're <laughs> scared of a Jimmy Butler? They're not. They're not. That's all I'm saying. And went through them unscathed. Yeah. And not only did they have their big series, they've done it in several different ways. The Heat have cakewalked to the Eastern Conference Finals. Mm-hmm. No shade to our teams, but right. high-key shade to our teams. The Sixers <laughs> and the, the Hawks, um, outside of the uh, Hurt Raptors team, were the three easiest teams in the in the Eastern Conference um, playoffs. playoffs. Yeah. They went through a Hawks team that was a bottom feeder, barely playing in, had to win two games to even qualify and an injured Joel Embiid 76ers team with no bench, even with Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. The Celtics had to go through the Nets, and even though I had them beating the Nets, that's still a a tough task, taking down Kyrie, uh, Kevin Durant, and and not them, they swept them, Mm -hmm. and then went into a game seven, had to win two games in a row against the Bucks. They're Mm -hmm. battle-tested, whereas the Heat is cakewalked. Yes, if you're a Heat fan listening, I said that she... Ooh. Because the Heat fans are popping big G like they did something. Oh, really? I, oh, I know. We, I can't play, we wait. played them too. I, can't I know. Wait till the Celtics <laughs> take them out. I know. But, Dylan, now we got to get to the. Whew, the juicy mess. Dylan. That's. That's. It's a couple of debates here in this. In this we go, yeah, we're going to have a little debate. A little debate. Um, but, Dylan, seeing Chris Paul. That hurt my heart. Chris Paul is my childhood. That hurt my heart. CP, he's he's point guard. He's he look, was, right, and as many times as we defended CP3 on this page. But he's looking real mortal right now. He's looking real mortal. Real mortal man, not godly. I'm saying, but honestly, Dylan, I feel like that series, and I mean, it's all debatable. Did Chris Paul look bad? Yes. But D-Book did not look great. He didn't. Where was D-Book's 40 point? Luca has shine in this um, playoffs. Jason yeah. Tatum has shine in this playoffs. Mm-hmm. L- D-Book, you're the young star cornerstone of the franchise of mm-hmm. the Phoenix Suns, and you can't say he hasn't been, he's young, he hasn't been there before. Jason Tatum is young. Luka Doncic is young. Mm-hmm. And you were just there last mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, where was all that juice? Like, mm-hmm. And I'm not saying, like, I just don't understand where was D Book's big performance. Right. Like, okay, Chris Paul stunk it up, but it's not like, oh, D Book dropped forty and Chris Paul couldn't give him no help. Yeah. D Book wasn't. The whole team really. Stunk I mean, it they up. were triple teaming and double teaming D Book. Yeah, of they course. were. They were. Um, but I'm sure they were doing the same thing to Luca, and they were trying to do the same thing to Jason Tatum. I mean, he just know Luca or Jason Tatum. All right. So, but yeah, it was it was a tough series for the Suns. I'm not exactly sure, you know, what happened to them. I mean. The Mavs, though, we, we do have to give the Mavs some credit. They were playing very good defense, and they had a good game plan against um, Devin Booker. They were, like like you said, they were coming at him, blitzing him, double-teaming him. Um, and kind of what they were doing to him kind of reminded but me of once. But that's what people do to all small guards. I mean, I know. I'm saying that's what I was about to say. It kind of reminded me what the Heat did to Trey Young. Mm-hmm. But the difference is D-Book should have had the team around him to step mm-hmm. up, and he should have figured it out, too. Like, mm-hmm. you know... D-Book is paid, and he's supposed to be that dude. He's supposed to be able to figure that thing out. He's supposed Y'all to be able to score. Y'all had seven games to figure it out. No, 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 no. Y'all had seven plus 
that Pelican series where y'all struggled too, that many games. Right. Y'all should have figured that. Ye- the fact that they struggled against the Pelicans, yeah. they should not have struggled against the Pelicans. Yeah, the only the only thing I will say about the Pelican series, the Pelicans were extremely, extremely hot and playing well above themselves. Okay, but I'm saying but still, they there was shouldn't a have lot of teams. Okay, did. so that's a one game. That's you give the team one game and that's your wake-up call. Oh, this team ain't playing around with us. Yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Two games. How many did they win? They only won two, right? Yeah, they only okay, won two. one game should have been like a shocker, or even just making it out of that Pelican series should have woke them all the way up for the Mavs. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, like, like I said, I think the the team in its entirety stunk it up. Like I said, you know they they didn't do a good job of shot making, and that's why you don't want to get to a game seven because game seven really all that came to a head because they they couldn't hit the broad side of a barn in game seven. I've never heard that. You never heard that phrase? No. What? You never heard that phrase ever? Mm-mm. That's crazy. Let me know in the comments below if y'all heard you can't hit the broad, couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. That's a, that's such a, that's a, everybody's heard that. Oh, not me. Mm-hmm. Not everybody. So let's talk about our predictions for Mavs Warriors. Now, let me just say, disclaimer, I'm not the biggest fan of the Warriors. Um, you know that, but well, for I, the people well, on the channel. Know. And then I f- refuse to have watched a whole NBA season to see the Warriors win. Why? The Warriors have been down and out for a couple of seasons. Oh. They've had their time. Move around. It's that, time for some new teams. That's what And I'm saying kudos. That's great for them. That means they're balling, whatever. But I'm still a hater. And I'm sick of them. I'm not I like I love watching the Warriors. I mean, I just don't like the way that they pop they G against LeBron like they did some G. Y'all had to build a super quadruple a dupa team just to take down LeBron. I don't like that narrative. Uh, Okay, but sports is all about heroes and villains. It's not fun if you don't have a villain. But let's get into our prediction. Obviously, I'm going with the Mavs. Mm, I'm going with the Warriors. But let me tell you why I'm going with the Mavs outside of my hate. Go ahead. The Mavs have been battle tested. They have. And not only Luka, but the Mavs others. Mm -hmm. They had to beat the Jazz for those games without Luka, so their others are battle-tested, red to go. Mm -hmm. Um, They just took down the Suns, um, defending Western Conference champs in a Game 7 on the road where the Suns are amazing on the road. Luka has been amazing all series, all last series against the Jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, The Mavs, like I said, they have been able to contain um, Donovan Mitchell. They have been able to contain D Book. They've been able to contain Chris Paul, the point guy. Got him looking mortal. Mm-hmm. I think that they will be able to. Now, yes, the shooting ability of the Warriors are whew, light years beyond the shooting ability of the Suns. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go with the maps. <laughs> you you said it. Um the, Luca's the, gonna be the Luca is the best player in this series. Luca, Steph, is. but Luca is the best player in this series. Matchup nightmare. Two small ball teams in the Mavs and the Warriors, but there's one completely unguardable player on the team, and his name is Luca. He showed to the Suns he can get whatever he wants, no matter who is on him. Big, small, um, guards, forwards. He showed during the Jazz. He can get whatever he want, whenever he want. Mm-hmm. Draymond Green, watch out. And that's, <laughs> you know, I, no, those are some very good points. But for me, I wish I had the numbers in front of me, but I don't. Um, there were a lot of games where the Suns did not shoot very well at all. And I don't think there's going to be that many games where the Warriors shoot as poorly as the Suns did in some of those games against the Mavericks. Do I think the Mavericks defense is pretty solid? Yes. They do have some very good others in Jalen Brunson, Spencer Dinwiddie, Reggie Bullock can knock down some shots, Bertans can knock down some shots, you know, um, what's his name, Benji or whatever, his, uh, or Maxi Kleba. That's, yeah, Maxi Kleba has turned out to be a, you know, a pretty viable big man. But when you talk about the Warriors, you got Steph Curry, probably the greatest shooter of all time. You got Klay Thompson, somebody who is, Finally, we saw him in that clinching game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Eight threes. He looked good. Clay is slowly, I don't know if he's all the way there yet, but he is getting back to that Clay Thompson we knew before he got injured. He getting back to that Clay Thompson we knew before he got injured. Eight threes. He's not 
as quite as athletic as he once was, but you can see he's starting to get some confidence about him and the way he moves and all that stuff. So Klay Thompson's coming back. We know about Jordan Poole breaking out in the scene. He's another one. You know, he's had a very good playoffs. His second round was a little more shaky than that first round, but first still. Of all, oh yeah. Oh, we talked about. Um, I talked about the Mavs battle tested. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Warriors played a spineless Nuggets team. Ooh, nice that's been spineless. spineless without. I mean, they're missing Michael Porter Jr. They're missing Jamal Murray. Yeah. They've been spineless since they did. Jamal play last season? No, nah, he got he got hurt late last season. Yeah, I'm saying they since so, Jamal. Yeah, because yeah, he got hurt in that. Um, because they beat the they beat the Jazz last year. Or was that in 2020? I can't remember. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Anyway, you know, without Jamal, they have the Nuggets have been spotless. They're like the 76ers yeah. version of the West. It's just the Joker. Yeah. Just out there trying to wield the team to some wins. Right. It's just the Joker trying to wield the team to some wins, but you already know first round X. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So they beat the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget, they struggled against the Grizzlies. They did. They won. Yeah, they won four games, but the Grizzlies won two without John Moran for two games, mm -hmm. without Dylan Brooks for two games, mm -hmm. and two of those games that the Warriors won came down to one of them came down to John ja missing a layup. You're right. And another one was a close game as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they dominated even the Grizzlies without John ja Morant That's for sure. and without Dylan Brooks. That's for sure. So they coming in shaky, just like the Suns. Well, I wouldn't say the Mavs coming, coming in, in strong. The Mavs are coming in strong, but I wouldn't say the Warriors are coming in shaky either. One, because they didn't have to go to a game seven, and two, they because, shouldn't have had to go to a game five. No, I mean not a game five, a game six. I get what you know, and I understand that. But I'm saying, at the end of that game six, that game six was close between the Warriors and the Grizzlies most of the game, but. Towards the end, the Warriors pulled away, and they showed their experience. They showed well, their and dominance. They're, and they're John morant -less. No, and oh, that's a fair point, and I get that. All I'm saying is, is that even though the Warriors haven't been battle-tested necessarily this season, they've been battle-tested before. This is the same core. The Steph, the yeah. Clay, the Draymond that I've been through it all. Draymond is a dog. We know Draymond's a dog. Like I said, I think Clay's getting back to Clay, and Steph is Steph. Why you act like you teaching a lecture? <laughs> I'm just making my points. <laughs> and then, you know, they're 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 figuring some things out. Like I said, I just like the Warriors brand of basketball. I think their ball movement, because that's another thing. I mean the Suns move the ball fairly well, but I don't think there's a team in the NBA that moves the ball quite as well as the Warriors do. Their ball movement is amazing. Steph is always moving, he's never stagnant. The boss just never seems to stick with the Warriors. And sometimes it got stuck in that Sun Series, which made it a little easier with that for the Mavs defense. So I just think they'll be in a little, and like you said, they're, both teams play small ball. I think that's an advantage for the Warriors because I think they're a little bit better at playing small ball than the Mavs. They have better others. You talk about Klay Thompson. You talk about Draymond Green. You talk about Jordan Poole. You talk about Otto Porter, who has come in and, be a, and been a nice 3 and D guy. Jonathan Kaminga has shown out. He's proven to be a very good young player for them. So I just, me personally, I like the words. You talk about, you know, Reggie Bullock versus Jordan Poole. I'm taking Jordan Poole. You talk about Klay Thompson versus Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's a dog. He's nice. He's at a nice coming out party, but I'm taking Klay Thompson. If, if Draymond is going to be checking Luka, you know, Luka is definitely going to win his battles, but Draymond Green's going to win his battles too. So I got to go with the Warriors. And that's a big part of That's so cute. Mavs me. So, <laughs> so we both picking the Celtics. I'm going with the Mavs. You sticking with the old Toms. And <laughs> Not, they're, I'm saying they're back. They're back to pretty much healthy. They're still we'll see. Because like I said, they barely clawed their way out that Grizzly series. They did, though. They Not barely the clawed their way out. Oh, yeah, they found a way. John Morant getting hurt. Uh, sometimes need a little luck. Yeah, so I'm just saying. The Mavs been about it. Big, big, big about it. And also, I had a little stat. So go, we'll bring up a little stat. Go, <laughs> go ahead, talk a little stat. I'll bring up a little stat. Go ahead, bring up a little stat. So, this season, the I don't know how many times the Mavs and Warriors played, mm. but 
Mavs versus Steph. This season held Steph to 20 points. Mm -hmm. 38% shooting from the field, 28% shooting from three. Um, so whatever they did, a little deep book, do a little deep book, put that little deep book on Steph. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know what their record was for? I think they, they had, split. They had split. Okay. Okay. I want to say they split, but you it'll know injuries and stuff. Yeah, I don't know who yeah. was playing in right. all them games. Right. But yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll be, be a good series. It'll be a very good series. Mavs. My heart says the Warriors. Don't let me down, please. I do not want to see another Warriors finals. I My would, Instagram feed cannot take some more Warriors propaganda. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad if the Mavs made it out though. I wouldn't be mad at it. A Celtics Maverick series would be a Celtics Maverick series would Celtics be odd, Mavs. but I would want be somebody good. new in there. Life is too new. short to be watching the Warriors win every year. Life is they too. Been, they done take a little two years. They oh, took a little two years off. Two years off. <laughs> took a little two years off. off. Okay, <laughs> all my life. All oh, my life. She need to work, she need to work on getting this hurt off. I'm going to take it to therapy. I'm trying now. to get the hurt off with the match, please. No, the only way you can get this hurt off is if you talk about it. You need to talk I've about talked it. about it. This has been healthy on here. That's good. I'm happy. We need to have more of these sessions. Any more Warriors haters in the comments? See me down there. <laughs> <laughs> But y'all, make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe. Keep rocking with us. Check out the links down below. Buy me a coffee help you with this channel. Shout out to Fisherman with the Sis Swords merch collection. So we talk to you guys next time. Bye. Peace.